Lighting a subject, especially if it's a scale model, can easily be rather complex, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. And I'm certainly not an expert on the topic. I simply know what I like and what works for me, and I'm going to try to share that here. Because my aim is always to make the images look cinematic and realistic, rather than just looking like models or toys, I always study and observe the lighting in films. I take particular inspiration from the films of Ridley and Tony Scott, who made copious use of smoke with their lighting. The smoke helps to diffuse and soften the light, but also adds depth to the scene by rendering the background elements in a soft shadow, suggesting their distance from the foreground subject. I also personally like the rays of light that emanate from backlighting, as it gives both the figure and the scene an ethereal and mysterious quality. Smoke, which I generate with a vaping device, can also accentuate the mood that you're hoping to create. If it involves horror, then smoke can help add a sense of slow reveal to the character, or obscure it to keep it sinister. The rays of light are achieved by shining a spotlight through the smoke and taking a long exposure. Just like the films in which these characters appear, I think less is more when showing the figure, and obscuring them and giving the viewer just a sense of who or what they are is far more effective. In this shot of the Terminator, emulating a scene from the film, I used a single light source, a small torch on the surface behind the figure, and filled the scene with smoke. Without the smoke, the figure would have been lit too sharply and only from that specific direction. The smoke diffused the lighting around the figure, making it appear less plastic and more realistic and cinematic. It added just enough highlights to his jacket to make it seem like leather. The sparks, ejected bullets and muzzle flash were obviously added in post. Direction of light is important, and quite a lot of my work involves backlighting the figure, using the dark to hide any obvious joints. The front of the figure can be lit from an angle with another softer light source if desired. For example, in this shot of the Terminator, he is backlit again with smoke acting as a diffuser for the light, while a small spotlight from the side with a red filter on it gives just enough illumination to create shadow and depth to his facial features. The red also contrasts nicely with the blue to give an appropriate 1980s colour aesthetic. In this shot, a little more light is allowed onto his face from a spotlight above. The spotlight was positioned to allow a silhouette of the alien within it, albeit out of focus to create a sense of depth within the scene. Likewise, when photographing the Predator, I use the overhead light source to accentuate the gloss of the figure, which I believe gives it a realistic organic look. The entire figure doesn't have to be fully lit, with smoke diffusing the light around him anyway, adding some intrigue to the scene. Another shot of the Predator. Once again backlit and filled with smoke, creates depth by placing his left arm in the distance and keeping the main elements such as his head and torso and the face hugger in a deeper silhouette. Sometimes I'll use the smoke as a background element, against which the sharper foreground outline of the figure will stand out. These shots of Paz Vizsla are an example. I generally don't like photographing unmasked figures, as the plastic faces are often too obvious and shiny. One has to be thoughtful of how the figure is lit to make it less obvious as a plastic model. If the figure has a good enough likeness, then direct light can be used, such as this overhead shot of the Dark Knight. This shot was achieved by mounting the figure onto a platform at an angle and aiming the camera perpendicular to it. This avoided the camera casting a shadow onto the figure from overhead. Another example, this one of Robocop emerging into a direct overhead light and another of him lit softly from above against a black background. A subject can be lit from any number of directions, and that will of course determine where the shadows fall onto it. If dealing with faces, the quality of the figure itself may determine from which direction the light should come from, and which direction is best to shoot it from. For example, with this figure of John Bernthal's Punisher from Mezco, I found that lighting it from above and shooting it from below gave it the most realistic look. With this figure of Dutch from Predator, keeping his eyes in shadow brought out the likeness to Schwarzenegger. In these examples with the Alien Queen, there is an obvious light source from behind, with a long exposure capturing the smoke as rays of light around the figures. In keeping with the tone of the films, a lot of the figure is obscured in shadow and darkness to keep it sinister and frightening. I also use a colder blue colour temperature, or white balance, which is more appropriate for a space alien. These techniques aren't limited to action figures. They can be applied to vehicles too. If Sir Ridley Scott shot Airwolf, for example, he might have made it look like this. 
These cars are 118 scale in a mock-up garage, with a table lamp shone either through a miniature window at the rear, or a spotlight from overhead, or both. The smoke softens the scene and makes it more filmic. The white balance here is a warmer hue than the cold blues of the Terminator or Alien Queen. Lighting cars is actually a topic unto itself, so I won't get into that detail here. Well, I hope this provides a little insight into how to light your figures for realistic toy and scale model photography. Obviously, this has been an overview, so I suggest you practice yourself and learn by doing. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.